Hey everyone, Dennis Chang here. Welcome to another video. The last few videos that you watched from the previous weeks were filmed all over the place in Canada, in the USA, in France. But now I'm back in Japan in Osaka. It's really, really hot and there was a typhoon, but it's okay. So today I want to talk to you about a new book release. It was released this week um, on the 15th of August. And you'll find all the links in the description box as well as the pinned comment. It's a book called Jazz Guitar Fretboard Visualization. Now, to be honest, the word jazz guitar is just there for the search engine because, I mean, I'm using jazz to demonstrate this concept, but it's a universal concept that uh, applies to all different styles, all styles of music. It's this idea of being able to connect your instrument to your ears. And I think this is a very important skill to have if you have... I guess very high aspirations as a musician and especially if you want to learn how to learn very very quickly um, those of you who know me know that I can learn extremely extremely quickly and the reason for that is because of this skill that I developed over many years often kind of by accident through a number of different circumstances one of which was playing, learning to play gypsy jazz in an era when, where there were no resources and where I almost had to learn on my own and a lot through the gypsy community. And then also working with all these amazing players from DC Music School and outside of recording sessions, you know, I would, we would have conversations, I get to know the, the artists, pick their brains and I noticed certain common patterns among all these amazing musicians. And that's what I want to share with you in this book. But first, please like and subscribe. Well, this whole video is actually an advertisement for this book. So, I mean, you can buy stuff off of DC Musical, off of, off of Sound Slice, but you can also buy this book if this advertisement works. Some people have asked me if I have perfect pitch, and I don't. But sometimes, in certain contexts, it almost seems like I do. But that's because of this skill that I acquired. And I talk about this in the book. I mean, I'm, I'm just going to tell you right away what it is. It's the fact that I spent a lot of time very carefully listening to the music that I like. But not just listening, la la la, listening like that. But I would grab my instrument and I would learn the songs. I would learn the melodies, learn the phrases and everything. Spent many years doing this. And what happened is after I learned quite a number of songs, I started to hear uh, the, the chord progressions and the melodies in my head and I could visualize them on my on the on the guitar because I learned them Here, here's a little quote-unquote perfect pitch test for those of you who ask me if I have perfect pitch if I did this right now I'm gonna censor my fingerboard but check this out if I did this I bet that most of you would probably be able to figure this out in one shot without even thinking about what key it is. You just know what it is. Why? Because maybe some of you have learned this riff before or maybe something like that or for those of you who didn't even have to think twice before reproducing what I just did. How did that happen? It happened because you are so familiar with this. You have worked on this before. You've played this before. One more, one more. Right? So this book is about developing this familiarity with the music that you care about, that you love deeply. One of the problems I think with modern education, especially with jazz, and I see this all over the internet on forums and everything. People mean well, but it's like, all right, I want to get into jazz. What should I do? And you have all these people, again, who mean well. You got to learn your modes. You got to learn your skills. You got to learn your pedals. You got to learn. All that is fine. But I want to go even further than that. Why do you want to play jazz? Is it because you heard someone play jazz and you really like the sound? Now, that's a good start. Start listening to this person's music. Check out the songs that they played. Learn the songs. 
why not start by playing music first and foremost? And you can be a relative beginner on the guitar and start to play jazz. You don't have to solo. You can play the melodies. You can play the chords. So there is a DC Music School artist on my site, Andreas Barati. You've probably seen videos of him when he was like 12 years old. And he told me how he started. He started just playing the melody to Blue Bossa. <laughs> Etc. Et That's how he started. And uh, of course, then he started learning other things little by little, but he was working on music right away. Um, other people have shared stories with me. I think Charles Lindberger was telling me that he started by playing some chords, rhythm guitar. Things like that. You don't have to be an advanced musician to be able to start playing simple songs. Like I said, don't have to improvise right away. You don't have to do advanced comping. You can do simple comping. It will do something to your fingers and your ears. When you play and you hear yourself play, it's going to make this kind of connection. I've been teaching at this guitar camp, uh, not guitar camp, a music camp, gypsy jazz camp, for over 10 years. It's called Django in June. And every year, they would divide the students into four levels. Level one being beginners level four being quote unquote advanced professionals and i always noticed one thing is that in in level four classes the professional class you would have musicians who were indeed advanced who had a lot of knowledge but who learn extremely slowly and then you had people in the level one beginner class who didn't know much but when i would show them something they would understand very very quickly and this is the important thing. It is possible to reach a quote-unquote advanced level while not being able to learn quickly. You just have to put in a certain amount of work. But I think wouldn't it be better if you can learn faster and understand the music faster? The same way, it's the same thing with language. So for those of you who are native English speakers, I can maybe say, I'm feeling hungry, so I'm going to eat some fish. Now repeat what I just said. Pretty easy, right? Now I'm going to say the same thing in French. Hopefully you're not French speakers. J'ai faim, alors je vais manger du poisson. Can you repeat what I just said? If you don't speak French, chances are you cannot. So why is it that you were able to repeat what I just said in English and not what I said in French? Because... When I told you the English sentence, you weren't really thinking about the sounds itself. You understood the deeper meaning behind the sounds. I'm, I don't remember what I said. I think, I think I said, I'm feeling hungry, so I'm going to eat some fish. Something like that. It doesn't have to be exactly what I said, but along the same lines. Whereas when I said it in French, it was the exact same phrase. But those sounds have no meaning to you. Therefore, all you can do is focus on on the sounds and with enough training yes of course you can manage to reproduce the sounds what did i say j'ai faim alors je vais manger du poisson you can spend just a few minutes working on it probably then have it memorized but if you understood the meaning you can repeat it right away and so it is with music when i hear the music that i like um, that i'm very familiar with I, I learn it super, super quickly. Not because I'm focusing on the sounds, but because the sounds have a certain meaning to me. I remember actually this, this past summer with my friend Christian van Hamer and I think Gian, my friend Gian was uh, in the room. We were listening to Django or something. We were listening to music and then we, me and Christian were talking about the chords. We didn't have an instrument for the hands. I said, we were talking to, hey, notice that they're playing this chord there and all that. And Gian was just witnessing that. Like we're talking about the music about the chords being played or whatever being played without any instruments in our hand. And sure enough, we grab the instruments and it would be exactly what we said was being played. It's because the sounds have a certain meaning to us. And it has meaning to us because we've worked on those sounds before. We, um, in my case, I worked on those sounds by spending hours and hours figuring out music by ear, learning so many songs. And I talked about people who who are beginners, who don't have knowledge, but yet who are able to learn quickly as well. 
Well, that's the talent factor. Uh, that's another topic on its own, a little bit of a controversial topic, but something that I've thought a lot about. But here's the thing. Even if you don't have that talent to learn quickly, you can learn to learn quickly by doing the things that I did, that I talk about in the book. That certainly was the case for me. In fact, some people who have seen me transcribe, especially Gypsy Jazz, I'm so familiar with it. It's like, I'm like a machine. And people think, oh, you're, you're able to do this because you're a perfect bitch. No, actually, when I, I've told this story before when I was younger, uh, I remember being this jazz history class. And I had good ears for single note, but when it came to harmony, I was so lost. And I remember all these other kids, they were like, oh, those are the chords to take the H or whatever. And I was like, I can't even hear what the chords are. I felt so ashamed. But now I can because I did the work. I, I learned a lot of songs. Eventually, after playing the song, the same songs over and over for months, for years, something happens. You just start to become familiar with it. You understand it. So in the book, since we're using jazz to demonstrate these concepts, even though it's universal, I mentioned the importance of seeing the big picture, of understanding the meaning behind the chords, the meaning behind the notes, that there are two sides of the same coin. So if you learn a melody like um, all the things you are, you need to see this in context. It's this. That's the thing, you have to be able to justify each note that you play. And if you play a chord, you're not just playing a grip. You're seeing how the, the, the grip or the chord that you play is relating to the melody. So you can choose the most appropriate chord voicing. For example, if you're playing a song like All of Me, you know the melody, let's say the melody singer is singing here. But then you play this chord voicing, it makes it hard for a singer to find this note because of this clash. And so this it forces you to get out of playing just grips, but to understand which voicings are appropriate at any given moment. Here you can play the major seven like this. So studying music in context this way, being able to connect everything to the context is the key to understanding music, at least this, this uh, aspect of music, because it's, it's a spectrum. There are different facets, but this is a huge one. And it's kind of like classical musicians, often when they learn a piece, like a violinist or concerto or something, they just learn the violin part. But what I'm making you do here is learn not only the violin part, but also the, the piano part or the accompaniment part, the, the orchestra. And this is what gives you a deeper understanding of the music. I remember <laughs> playing with some classical musicians who had transcribed a number of Grappelli solos. And um, it was hard playing with them because they had always had to start from the beginning. They couldn't start from like the middle part of the second chord. That meant nothing for them. They had to be like measure two, measure three, like whatever. They didn't understand the music. They had the, the sheet music in front of them. They're playing the notes and they played very, very beautifully. But they never learned how to improvise or they don't understand how it works because they're only focusing on the individual notes. And it's the same thing like when I, I'm transcribing. Let's say, let's say I hear um, a phrase like this. Right? And I'm transcribing, I'm not just doing like this. One note at a time. I'm trying to hear the entire meaning of all the notes together, of the phrase. 
So in that case, that cla those classical musicians can transcribe as many solos as they want and play them as beautifully as they want. But unless they do this connection, they will never learn how to improvise. That's why I've made a video about this some time ago. I don't remember where, where I said that transcribing is useless if you don't do this. Depends what your goals for transcribing are, of course. If you just want to play the solo note for note, okay, fine. But if you're trying to absorb something and you're not doing this, then transcribing is totally useless. So the book is more of a lifestyle change and a way to look at music, to think about music. It's all happening here. And it's more about that than it is about practicing certain exercises, even though the book in the beginning chapters does show certain exercises and whatnot. But as you read through the book, you realize it's actually, it's, it's a lifestyle. And to be honest, that is the biggest challenge. How can you adopt this lifestyle? How can you uh, develop such habits? Because whether you believe or not, I sincerely believe that we are, as human beings, are creatures of habits. And if we don't develop the right habits, then it can be hard to, to be in this quote-unquote correct path to being able to learn quickly. Hopefully, if you get the book and you read through it, you get, you'll get inspired at one point to... And it's, it's, of course, it's also a spectrum. Like I said earlier, it's, there are multiple facets to this. Hopefully, um, you'll be motivated or inspired to start adopting some of this. It's the same thing. There are a lot of analogies between language learning and all this stuff. For me, to be able to progress at speaking Japanese, I had to do a lot of things. I had to create a new lifestyle for myself in order to progress naturally. And I'll be honest, it was really, really hard to find the motivation or even the courage to adopt said lifestyle. I'll just give you one little example, like a whole year ago, not even a whole year, uh, yeah, December of last year, the Japanese, when they, a lot of the young people, when they write on their phone, they have this system called swipe. And when you're someone like learning Japanese for the first time and you see this system, it's, it's insane. You, you feel like you want to give up because it's so completely foreign. And the first time I tried that system, I was like, uh, 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 uh. but what I did is I forced myself to use it. I deleted the other kind of like foreigner friendly system from my, my phone. I deleted that system completely so that I was forced to only use that system. And then I started chatting with my friends who were, luckily I have a lot of friends who are Japanese who talk to me, who message me because for work or what is to just, you know, just to talk. And I remember talking, the first time I started using that, my friend would be sending messages really quickly I was like, whoa, wait a second, wait a second. Let me just reply to this one. Uh, but now I'm pretty, pretty, pretty darn quick. It's been eight months. I forced myself into that situation. I created the environment for myself. That's another topic in itself, creating the right environment. So you have to kind of have this, the courage or the discipline to create this environment for yourself. Start learning the songs that you like. Start listening to music. Learn by ear. Uh, figure out the music by ear. If you, if you get stuck, ask someone. And if you don't understand what you hear, ask someone to help you. Because I did get help along the way. But doing this uh, in the beginning was very, very slow. But it's how I'm able to learn extremely, extremely quickly now. So there we go. That's my book. Um... I can make other videos about talent and about environment at one point if that interests you. I know a lot of what I do in, on my channel is very, very philosoph philosophical, but I think it's important to think about such things. If you are struggling, if you're ever in a rut or something like that, it's good to think. Some talented people never had to really think much. They were just already on the right path from the beginning. And that's them. And... You're you, I am me. I know that I didn't have the talent of, for example, Birelli Legren, but I was able to acquire the skills that Birelli Legren naturally has. I can learn just as fast as he does. Um, or anyone, I'll take anyone on. Uh, even like fam some really famous players have noticed this about me, that I learned faster than they did. 
and it's because of this skill that I want to share with you through this book. And again, when you go through the book, you'll have to read it many, many times. And you take, you practice what you feel like practice, practicing in the moment from that book, but try to adopt the philosophies as soon as you can. And one thing that I also say in the book is, is that it's, it's endless. You actually never master anything, but you always get faster and faster and faster. The faster you can react, the better you will be. And there is no limit to how fast you can react, or practically no limit. So there we go. That's my book. Check it out. Thank you so much. Like, subscribe, comment. Woo!